Good morning, beloved in Jesus Christ. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, trusting and hoping that uh, God is with you and you are well wherever you are in Gauteng, in South Africa, and even in the world. Today, Sunday of 31 May 2020 is Pentecost Sunday where we remember the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as Jesus has promised that it will happen after he ascended to heaven. So in this worship service, I welcome you all. Myself, uh, Pastor T. Rabali, a.k.a. The Rabbaman. I hope that we can worship God together uh, through this means. Let us begin this worship service by seeking God's help, asking God's blessing uh, for uh, coming into his presence. We lift our eyes upward and we ask ourselves, where will our help come from? Our help comes from Jehovah, the Lord God who created heaven earth and all that exists. Beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God our Father be with you all through the waking of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, let us then come to the singing of the song, English song, All People That On Earth Do Dwell, combined with verses from the Sutu song which uh, comes from Sifila Sassioni, the song that talks about all nations, all languages, uh, different people come and praise Jehovah because he is Lord. Beloved, on this day that we reflect on the great thing that God did in sending the Holy Spirit as he promised, let us then reflect on that by reading from um, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 13, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 13, and we will also read from Galatians 5. Galatians 5 from verse 16 to 26. So let us begin by reading or listening and remembering what happened when we say Pentecost Sunday. Uh, what happened as we read, as we are reminded of this by reading from Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 13. It reads as follows. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided 
tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. Let us also read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to verse 26. And through this passage be reminded of the work of the Holy Spirit, what he came to do, what he does in us as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ. And also we must be humbled to see the wrong and be encouraged to repent through the power of the Holy Spirit and to walk in the way of God through the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 5 from verse 16 to 26. But Galata, Demaya 5, verse 16 to 26. It reads as follows. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Beloved, uh, having read this passage, uh, let us come or continue to worship God by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Today, I say, Moro, or Moro, eh, Mangwanani Akanaka, which means, eh, hello, good morning, in Shona. Today, the Holy Spirit is taking us to Zimbabwe, where this language of Shona is eh, spoken. Eh, it's a, a major language or dominant language. Eh, Moro, hello, eh, Mangwanani. Uh, good morning. How are you? Makadi. Uh, Makadi. That means how are you? And then when you respond, I am fine. Uh, and I hope you are doing well this morning. Ini dakanaka. Uye di novimba nemiwo maita zakanaka mangwanani ano. So let us uh, say together, as I said, uh, we are concluding this month of May, Africa Month. 25 May 1963, the founding of the Organization for African Unity. So as Christians, we also believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior as well here in Africa. He is our Lord. And even in heaven, even when we are taken 
to see our Lord Jesus and gathered with other believers from all parts of the world uh, who will be speaking these languages that God has given us. As we just read in Acts chapter 2, where the Holy Spirit make the people of Jesus to speak uh, different languages. So let us say together, Ndino tenda muna muari baba we masimba ose musiki we denga nepasi. Ini ndino tenda muna Jesu Kristu, mwana omana wake mumwechete ishe wedu. Ndiani aga zwara ne mweya mtsuene, aga berekwa ne mandara Maria, aga tambura pasi papundio piratu, Aga robererwa, aga fa, uye aga vigwa, aga burugira kuwa kafa. Nezuva retatu, aga mukazwe, aga kuirwa kudenga. Uye unogara kurudi, ruamwari iye we masimba ose. Aja uya zwakare kuzotonga papenyu neba kafa. Dinotenda kumwe ya mtsuene. Imwe chechi zene zese za krestu. Kuyanana kwe va zene. Kuregerera we zwibi. Kumoka we muviri. Ne upenyu usingapiri. Amen. So uh, I, I hope uh, those who know uh, Shona will forgive me. The, and there are others who know more than me. Especially those who come from uh, Boniani there. But anyway... Uh, we will speak these languages perfectly when we come to heaven. I believe that. So, as I said, today is Pentecost. Nasi is over. Repentecost. Tinorangarira uya We are remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit. Tinorangarira uya wemweya msuene. So, let us um, then also understand what this means, reminding each other of the uh, our creeds, our confessions. Mangwaro ashwa ni ataluche zalute ndoro ashu. Imi balo yetu esiza ukutaza nukusisisa lendo esi kolwayo. So we'll read from the Belgic Confession. Belgic Confession, Article uh, 11. In the pamphlet that you get through WhatsApp or email, there is uh, the Belgic Confession in Isizulu and also Chivenda. But here we'll read in English. Uh, I'll read in English. So, Belgic Confession, Article 11. We believe and confess also that the Holy Spirit from eternity proceeds from the Father and the Son. He is neither made, created, nor begotten but he can only be said to proceed from both. In order, he is the third person of the Holy Trinity, of one and the same essence, majesty and glory with the Father and the Son, true and eternal God, as the Holy Spirit, Holy Scriptures teach us. Indeed, let the church say, I confess, I believe. Let us also remind each other of the Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day, 20 katika sima Heidelberg sonda 20 isonto 20 ku katika sima ya Heidelberg in question 53 there is a question which says what do you believe concerning the holy spirit and let us say together first that he is co-eternal god with the father and the son second that he is also given unto me by true faith makes me a partaker of Christ and all his benefits, comforts me and shall abide with me forever. Indeed, let the Church of Christ say, we believe, we confess. Beloved, let us then sing uh, the song from Nimbo Zabatendi, the song which says, Karita Karere, Karipemberere, Uda Amuya Muketwa. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Indeed, let us rejoice and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Let us also sing the song uh, from Amagamok Tabelela Zulu song Amagamok Tabelela number 106. Moya Come, Holy Spirit, to Saint Lizio, help our hearts, uh, help us so that we see our wrong, we can change, uh, help us to remember the truth, help us so that we hold on to the right path. Beloved, let us come to prayer. I will lead you uh, in prayer. Let us uh, pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that you, Jehovah, you love us. You are our Father in Jesus Christ. You call us and include us in your covenant, in your family. We call to you as our Father and we believe we are your children. We believe that you reveal yourself to us, calling us. You make us to be born again by your Holy Spirit, by your word. You make us to have new life. Indeed, we are able to pray, trusting that we are heirs of your promises, of the covenant blessings, and of the eternal life. We believe that because of the Holy Spirit in us, who talks to our spirit and our souls and hearts, assuring us that indeed we are adopted through Jesus Christ. Oh God, it is great mercy and grace that we who are sinners, who fail and transgress your commands in many ways, are called your children, are called beneficiaries of your love and of your blessings. We thank you this morning, on this day, the Sunday that always reminds us that you are the creator, life comes from you, all that we need in life is provided by you. Sunday reminds us of your power to deliver. Nothing is impossible for you. You defeated death when you resurrected Jesus from the dead. Indeed, he no longer 
is under this case of sin, but he has taken it and has lifted it also from us, so that we no longer look only to death, we no longer see death as a case, as a punishment, but death is now blessed. Death is now a gateway to can start to enjoy and experience the full measure of what you promised. We thank you, God, that on Sunday we also are reminded of the first things, the first fruits that you give, that you promise of eternal life. You give us the Holy Spirit. You, God, are in us so that we can start to taste eternal life. We can start to experience having you, being with you. And through the Holy Spirit in us, we have divine life, divine power, and we have everything needed, essential, to can do what is necessary for you, to can live a righteous life. And that is why we pray thanking you, O God. That is why we gather on this day, we worship you, we praise you, because you alone are worthy of all the honor and praise. Thank you for protection. Thank you for food and shelter and clothing. Thank you for everything that we were able to achieve our successes. Thank you for intelligence and strength. Even in all that we need, we look to you. You are the source. You are the fountain of all that we need physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Everything, oh God, we need you. We thank you and we also ask you that you be with us even through this worship service as we have read your word reminding us of the work of the Holy Spirit help us also when we come to read the scripture passage whereby we continue to hear your word we continue to worship through your word in listening to your word help us grow us rebuke us where we go wrong humble us so that we don't continue uh, in being proud Help us with wisdom so that we know the right from the wrong, but also empower us to can overcome sin and temptation. We pray to you, O God, as church, all over, in many places. Help us, O God, to know that to be church is not because of building or gathering in a building, but it is because you are in us, you have given us faith, you have given us love, you have given us the Holy Spirit, and wherever we are, we are able to be church. We are able to profess and proclaim the faith of Jesus as Savior and King. We are your ambassadors. We are your servants. We worship you not just on Sunday, but everywhere where we are. Help us, O oh God, to remember that we are here on earth to do for you, to do for the glory of your name. Help us, O oh God, to be the salt and the light wherever we are. We pray also thanking you for this means for this technological means to can spread your word to can worship to can grow spiritually to can be nourished through your word help us oh god to indeed praise you to indeed worship you we pray for the spread of your word we pray that the preaching of your word done in many ways and various places can succeed can be fruitful can make people to repent and to grow in knowing you we pray, O oh God, even in this time, as we are in South Africa, in the world as well, and we are under stress of COVID-19, this new disease, which people are still studying and understanding, but there are many who have been sick, some have been sick and get healing, but some you have called them to the next life. We pray, O oh God, knowing that it is something which you know, you understand this disease as we don't know everything but we trust that you know everything help us protect us protect our health help us to trust you no matter what happens we also know oh god that you are almighty and you can give us healing but you are also almighty in giving us perfect healing whereby when you take us from this earth you give us perfect healing you take us to a place where there's no more sickness, there's no more sin, and there's no more death. We pray, O oh God, that you help our doctors, nurses, to can be kind, give them the strength, give them the courage and confidence to can help those who are sick. We pray for the 
medical personnel, researchers, give them the ability to study, to can research and lead them in finding a cure and a way to can manage and defeat this disease. We pray for our leaders politically, our government, help them to take the right decisions, help governments all over the world to work together, to can cooperate, to can coordinate efforts and resources in fighting this disease, but not only this disease, but even other issues that affect us as humanity here on Earth. It's either issues of protecting the environment, it's either issues of economic development, it's either issues of fighting terrorism and other oppressive systems. Help our leaders, O oh Lord, you are God all over the world. Help them to take the right decisions. We pray, O oh God, that you protect us from violence and crime. Help us to tolerate each other, to love each other, to respect each other. Even this week uh, in America, we hear and we see reports of police brutality whereby black people, many or some suffer brutality and oppression. We pray, oh God, knowing that racism, prejudice is something which is a sin even in your sight. Help us to love each other even though we are different gender, different skin color, different cultural background, different economic status education status we are different in many ways but help us to love each other help us to forgive each other help us to change of our wrong ways and in many ways we don't uh, respect the dignity of others even here sometimes in south africa when others come from outside of south africa we disrespect them we hurt them we harm them help us oh god to be a loving people we know your love as Christians. Help us to live out that love, to act it out, to live in peace, to seek peace. Help us, O oh God, to protect each other, to protect life. And we pray for our police and justice system to do the right thing, to be bold in fighting what is wrong, so that indeed righteousness is encouraged. O oh God, we pray for our economy. We know that you are the provider. The resources that we have in this country come from you. Help us to share in the resources of this country. Help us, oh God, even in this time where there is lockdown, there is um, things which affect the businesses and employment situation in our country. We pray to you knowing that you can help us to overcome, help us to go through this dark period, difficult period. Many, we are full of worry, even anxiety and fear about the future. Where will bread and food and water come from? Oh God, help us to trust in you. Help us to respond in any situation, whatever situation, trusting in you, with faith in you. We pray, oh God, that you lead us in all the efforts that we do, whether in our workplaces, in our business. Help us in our seeking of jobs. Help us, O oh God, guide us. We know that you are the one who can help us. We pray also for those who are studying. We know that they are coming to exams or coming to the end of semester where they have to be assessed. Some are even returning to school. Help, O oh God, that they are studying. Even during this situation that it doesn't distract them. We also remember our metrics who have to finish secondary this year. Help them, oh God, that this situation doesn't distract them, but they focus on their studies. Help us, oh God, that we grow in knowledge, we grow in intelligence so that we study your creation. We can look after it. We can help to redeem creation. We can help to come with solutions to the problems that we are faced with as humanity. Help us, oh God, with intelligence, indeed, with growth of knowledge. We pray, oh God, that you be with us not only here but also other churches other believers all over the world in all four corners of the earth be with them be with those who are being oppressed who are being persecuted for professing that jesus is savior and lord we hear of reports also of governments even interfering with the services even online services Oh God, we pray that you fight for your church. We know that nothing, nobody can stop the spread of your word. And we pray for boldness. 
We pray for perseverance. We pray for faithfulness. Even ourselves here in South Africa, as a Reformed Church Jobek, Church here in Gauteng in South Africa, help us to be bold, help us to be committed to achieving the calling that you have given us. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, let us continue in worship and come to the reading of today's scripture. Uh, as you know, we are continuing in the section of Second Kings, which focuses on the life, the work of Elisha, the work that God did through the prophet Elisha. So let us uh, read in chapter 6 and chapter 7. That is what we are going to look at today. That is the word of God for us today. Second Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7. The course is Zawubili, Dima ya 6, Nandima ya 7. Ama course is Zawubili, Isatluko 6, ne 7. I will lead you in reading using the English Standard Version. You will follow in the Bibles that you have before you. Now, the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, and each of us get there a log, and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And Elisha answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And Elisha answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was failing a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master! It was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. Once when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servants, saying, At such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word, to the king of Israel, beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are going down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God told him. Thus he used to warn him, so that he saved himself there more than once or twice. And the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled because of this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and seize him. It was told him, Behold, Elisha is in Dotan. So he sent there horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Elisha said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And when the Syrians came down against him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Please strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, This is not the way, and this is not the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha said, O Lord, open the eyes of this man, that they may see. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. As soon as the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I strike them down? Shall I strike them down? Elisha answered, You shall not strike them down. Will you strike down those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. So the king prepared for them a great feast, and when they had 
eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. And the Syrians did not come again on raids into the land of Israel. Afterward, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, mastered his entire army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria as they besieged it, until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and the fourth part of a cub of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. Now as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him saying, Help my lord, O king. And the king said, If the lord will not help you, how shall I help you? From the threshing floor or from the winepress? And the king asked her, What is your trouble? She answered, This woman said to me, Give your son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And on the next day I said to her, Give your son, that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. When the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. Now he was passing by on the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth beneath on his body. And he said, May God do so to me, and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. Now the king had dispatched a man from his presence. But before the messenger arrived, Elisha said to the elders, Do you see how this murderer has sent to take off my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold the door fast against him. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he was still speaking with them, the messenger came down to him and said, This trouble is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Chapter 7 But Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a seer of flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain on whose hand the king leaned said to the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But Elisha said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four men who were lepers at the entrance to the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, Let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had made the army of the Syrians to hear the sound of chariots and horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us, the king of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt, to come against us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses and their donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and their donkeys, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent and ate and drank, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried off things from it and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, we came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no one to be seen or heard there, nothing but the horses tied and the donkeys tied and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out, and it was told within the king's household. And the king rose in the night and said to his servants, 
I will tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they've gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. And one of these servants said, Let some men take five of the remaining horses, seeing that those who are left here will fare like the whole multitude of Israel, who have already perished. Let us send and see. So they took two horsemen, and the king sent them after the army of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. So they went after them as far as the Jordan, and behold, all the way was littered with garments and equipment that the Syrians had thrown away in their haste, and the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, and the people trampled him in the gate, so that he died, as the man of God had said, when the king came down to him. For when the man of God had said to the king, Two seers of barley shall be sold for a shekel, and a seer of fine flour for a shekel about this time tomorrow in the gate of Samaria, the captain had answered the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, Elisha, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. <clears throat> that is the word of God. Let the church say Amen as we receive this word. Beloved, in reading with you this passage, these two chapters, continuing in this book of Second Kings, the main thing we must see here, the main thing which connects this passage uh, is to see, sight, uh, to have vision, ubona, uh, or ubona. So it is something which we must see here that God gives us sight, gives us vision of the whole reality or uh, even including spiritual uh, reality of things that we can't see. Mzimu uripa ukonobona zutu zote, zuruane ubona zutu za muya, udiva zutu za muya. Interest fane siboni is that unkulunkulu uyenza kuti sibone, sibede nukubona yonki into, kakulu ukubona nukuzisisa into zomoya. And in listening to this passage, we must uh, focus especially in verse 16 and 17 where Elisha talks to the young man when he sees the Syrian army surrounding them and he says that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prays that uh, God opens the eyes of this young man. But also chapter 7 uh, verse uh, 18 to 20 where he talks of this captain of the soldiers who had come to arrest Elisha but then they failed to arrest him and Elisha said, you will see what God will do, but you will not eat of it. But even throughout this passage, you will see that he's talking of uh, seeing. So it is something which uh, I, I want us to be reminded of today. Because, beloved, uh, it can happen that you, you have eyes. You have eyes, but then uh, you don't see the whole truth. It, it is what we can call spiritual blindness uh, which means that you don't have vision you don't have sight of the whole reality or sometimes you choose to ignore some evidence about things that are there which you can't touch things that are there which are beyond this life this material existence uh, and this whole truth this whole reality it is something which includes not just the physical, not just things which you can touch, but also the spiritual, things which are invisible. When you talk of seeing the whole reality, it is not just about things happening now, but even things that can happen in the future. So, our God, Jehovah, is God who knows everything, he sees everything. We as human beings, one of the things we must accept, even though we think we are intelligent, is that God is the one who knows everything. We don't know everything. We can't see everything. 
And that's why we need God, Jehovah, to reveal himself to us, to show himself to us, to give us the truth so that we can know the real truth. And that is what God does through the, his word. That is what we see in this passage, God doing also through the prophet Elisha, so that people can have faith, people can have knowledge of the whole reality. Now, when God reveals his truth, reveals who he is, reveals the truth, which some of it we can't see, uh, sometimes people, they can choose to ignore, to deny, to reject that, because there are people who will say, no, there is nothing uh, spiritual. The only real things are the things we can see, are the things I can smell, are the things I can taste, are the things which I can touch with my hands. Uh, whatever which I can't touch, I can't see, is not real. And you find people like that. And those kind of people, they will reject the word of God, they will reject that Jehovah exists, they will reject what the Bible is saying, they will even reject the miracles. Uh, even these passages that they, we read, they will say, no, it is not true. Um, there is no heaven, there is no hell, there is no Jesus Christ who went to heaven, there is no Holy Spirit who came from heaven. No, those kind of things are not there. But on the other hand, we have people who, even though they hear that there are things which we can't see, invisible things, then they will say, no, uh, there are many other gods. There are many other spiritual forces, other spiritual powers. Yes, we are telling us about Jehovah. But Jehovah is just one of the many gods, many powers. And we as people, if we want help, we can go to any god. We can go to any spiritual power. We can go to our ancestors. We can go to other gods. And you find them fighting against the Bible, fighting against the revelation of God that Jehovah is the only God. Jehovah is the Most High. Jehovah is the King. They deny that. They say we can bow down, we can follow other gods, we can get help from other gods. So I'm saying this so that you understand the situation, not just in this history that we are reading, but also even today where people, when we talk of truth, what is life, what is human life? What is human existence? Why the world is as it is? And what is needed to fix, to make things right? And you find that people come with different answers. And it's because some deny this truth of God. Some will deny it by saying there is other gods. So when we have read here, we can see examples of this. But this passage, as I said, um, is part of history is part of history that was recorded, especially for the first people, uh, the people who went to exile in Babylon. And it was a, a warning, a lesson to the, to, to the church, showing them when you deny the truth of God and you, you don't want to see it, uh, you don't want to believe it, this is what happens. You end up in exile. And for us, it's not just exile where we lose our land and houses. But we end up, we can end up in eternal fire or eternal suffering. But it is also a lesson for the church today that yes, we can have God's truth shown to us so that we see God, so that we know God. But then you find that we reject it. Sometimes we can start like the Israelites, knowing God, believing God, walking with God, accepting the word of God. But then we go down. We become blind we become spiritually blind we ignore the truth of god and here the prophet elisha representing the word of god as i said he helps his servant to see the truth of god god help him to see but then others don't see or they are shown but then they don't want to see and yes they will see but god is saying they will not experience it now in this passage, when we talk of God who makes us to see, to see the spiritual truth, there are several things which I want us to understand from this passage. Number one, God opens our eyes to see that we are lost. And so that we can believe in God who recovers what is lost. 
riphesese uhera ha batho naone ribe batho bane batenda khaye ri tshidiba zwa uri ndi mudzimu a kona u uwisa a kona u wana batho bo kherawo injo kale sifane sibone is that unkulunkulu uyazivula amehlo sibone ukuthi nokuzwisisa ukuthi ukulahleka yini ukuba abantu abalehlekile yini but futhi sikholwe ukuthi yena unkulunkulu uyabuyisa eh uyathola into elahlekile ayibuyise eh ibe eh, kukundawo e right and that's what we see in verse 1 to 4 um, the school of prophets the university of prophets is growing even though there is Baal. so they need to build another house to build another place so they go with elisha to get some wood to get building material they build with wood but then one of the prophets who had borrowed an axe head or had zimambado waboleka imbazo kumunyo umuntu he loses that as he is cutting off the the, the, the tree it the, the axe head falls into the water uh, into the river so he cries oh master uh, that axe head is lost and it was borrowed but then elisha say where is it he throw the stick and the axe head floats up and he is able to take it now it, it is a miracle now some people will read here and say oh okay men of god can see things that are hidden things that are lost so let's go to them maybe we have lost uh, cows they will find cows for us maybe our cars are hijacked i will go to men of god you will see where the car is uh, no that's not the miracle the miracle here is that this iron x head floated those who know science in simbi simbi yaposwa madini maolahla amanzi it will go down but now you see elisha throwing a stick the x head comes up it floats to the surface that is the miracle and it was a reminder of god who recovers god who can bring back the lost israel who is in exile they have lost land obviously they will ask themselves um is god no longer caring for us will god accept us back we were part of the covenant or we are part of covenant there were promises made through abraham even to us what about those promises what about god's plan to bring the messiah now that we have failed we have disobeyed god and now we're in exile what will happen to us are we lost forever and this miracle was a, a reminder a teaching to, to to them that no uh, god can recover god can bring back and it is something which we must also remember even uh, today when you read here you see that this x head did not lift itself up it did not make itself to float up but it is um, uh, it is so with human beings we, we we are reminded that we are born as sinners and sin is a burden which uh, makes us to sink to sink in guilt sin makes us to sink in darkness um, it is heavy but then god gives us to be saved he lifts off this burden he takes the weight of sin from us and that is what he did in jesus christ who when you read in luke chapter 19 verse 10 he says i come to seek the lost to seek and save the lost and that is what we must understand about god in ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 7 it says we were dead in sin but god raised us up with jesus christ that is what we must see about this miracle people of god the whole human race lost because we are far from god lost because we are in darkness we don't have truth lost because we are in sin controlled by sin but then god sends his son god calls us by his word god lifts up gives us peace gives us forgiveness gives us to be free gives us to be useful and to work for him and that is what we must understand even from this passage even from the whole bible luke chapter 15 for example gospel of luke chapter 15 jesus makes clear that god looks or he restores he recovers people are lost they go away from god they go away from the truth but we are called back and when we get to heaven all of us we must be able to say we're lost we must sing like that song amazing grace i was blind but now i see 
uh, I was lost, but I, I was found. Um, because if you don't accept that, how did you come to God? Because Jesus, as he said, I came to save and seek the lost, to recover the lost. And that is what uh, we must understand. But when we don't see things like God, sometimes you think you are not lost. You think people who are, for example, rich, people who are educated, no, they are not lost. The people who are lost are the people who don't have education, people who don't have money, people who don't have houses. Can't he? Even those with money, even those with possessions, even those with positions of power, they can be lost. But it depends on how you define or explain what it means to be lost. Because if you don't understand the way God understands, then you will not work with God. You will not recover the things that are lost, people that are lost. But the second thing which you must see in this passage, God opens eyes so that we, re we realize that nothing is hidden from his sight. And we must believe that God is in control and nothing can stop his plans. Verse 8 to 14. And the and ahuna chitu chinesha do ima panda u vera panda ha plane zamzin. Into esbiles fane si bon, unkulunkulus vula mefo, ukut si bon, si azguti, ayiko ent e efitagele pambi kwak, ubona yonki into. And futi si tembu guti unkulunkulu uye o laulayo, uye o o o pete yonki into ez anjinizak. And ayiko into ezo vimba, e i plane kankulunkulu, ezo stopa. And that's what we see, as, we, as I said, verse 8 to, to, to 14, where you, you hear of the king of Syria fighting uh, Israel. And then he's trying to come with plans, making strategies in secret. But then uh, those strategies are not working because Elisha, God revealed to him, he go and tell the king of Israel, don't go this place. And the king of Israel doesn't go there. But he sent people to check and he find that, yeah, Elisha was telling the truth. I was going into a trap of the king of Syria. So the king of Syria then started to wonder, how? How come? Because I'm making these good plans, but they're not succeeding. Um, I'm failing. Maybe one of you, my servants, are spying and uh, telling our secrets to the Israelites. But then one of the servants said, no, 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 no. It is Elisha, the prophet in Samaria who is able to tell the king of uh, Israel that uh, what you are saying, what you are planning uh, is like this. And then he is able to, to, to not get uh, in danger. So it is something which uh, then, as the servant said, uh, Elisha is telling the king of Israel what you are saying in your bedroom. In other words, the things which are secret, the things which are hidden, the things which... You, you, you are doing in the dark. You, you are planning wherever you are. Uh, God is able to see it. And this is uh, something which we, we, is reminding again. God who knows everything. God who sees everything. But also it helps us to trust in God. We, we don't know everything. Even though you wish to know everything. Sometimes we want to see everything. Maybe whatever our children are doing. Whatever is being decided in the boardrooms. Whatever is decided in meetings. But we don't know. We can't be everywhere. We can't know everything. And even if we might have that information, for example, but we might not be able to do anything about it. So this message is helping us to see God, to trust in God. Um, because you can even make an example of maybe you are a soccer team and you can be told maybe a strategy of Barcelona. Uh, they are going to play maybe 4-3-3. Three, three. They are going to play with Messi, Suarez and, and Dembele. And you, maybe you, you, you are black lepers. Even if you know that, that information, sometimes it won't help you because you might end up losing. But what we must see here is that God knows, God sees, but not only that God knows and sees the information or everything that, that is happening, but God is able to work and achieve no matter what the enemy will decide, no matter what the enemy plans. God can either stop their plans or even if they plan, their plans fail. But whatever happens, God's plans will go on. And that is what you, you must see here. Uh, you can have knowledge, for example, about Satan and his tricks and his traps. But if you don't read and apply the Bible, 
you will be defeated and harmed. Uh, it is a lesson even for the church that uh, God is above not just physical enemies, but also spiritual enemies. And God protects us from their harm. Uh, there is Satan. There is evil spirits. Some people are even afraid of witch, witches and sangomas and, and superstitions. And hey, hey, some people are planning against me. Even if, I don't know, even if they are there. But God is there. God is watching not just over me, but is watching even what those people are doing. And whatever they do cannot stop you as a child of God. Cannot stop you as church of Jesus Christ from doing or achieving what God wants you to achieve. And that is what we must understand when we believe in Jesus who rose and went to heaven, who's ruling over everything and now even gives us the Holy Spirit. And it is so that we as servants, disciples of Jesus, no matter if the devil and these people, governments can try to stop and overcome the kingdom of God, they will fail. And that is the belief, that is the sight, that is the vision we must have. But many times we are afraid of people. We are afraid of uh, even sangomas and witchcraft and people giving us curses and we think, hey, hey oh, we can't do it. Uh, this is a message that is saying, even if those people can come up with those kind of things, they cannot overcome. But the third thing, God who opens eyes he is able to make you realize that you are not alone. But you must believe that God is almighty and he provides you with uh, abundant power. Chabraru chine rafanolo chibona chine mzima kuri nendi ya ni vura mato ni chibone duri aninote di naweiwe and nendi na manda ote di nipa na manda di naweiwe uri nikono kuunda enye ntu esifani siboni ya start unkulu unkulu zvula meto ukuti sibone ukuti si si na unati unkulu unkulu unati we are not alone unati and yena una manja ong and uya sniga amanda Usnika ukuti sikwazi ukunqoba. Into esibonayo from verse 15 to verse 19 where when the king has sent this army to arrest Elisha in the morning the servant comes and sees this big army and is afraid. Oh, what will we do? What will we do? Servant, uh, master. But then Elisha tells him, do not be afraid because those who are with us are more than those who are with the Syrians. And he prayed, God, open his eyes to see. And what did he see? Wow, you see the hill surrounding with many horses and chariots of fire. And it is something which God did here. He opened the eyes of that young man. It was not Elisha. Elisha prayed and God opens the eyes of that young man. And it is not just talking of physical sight, but it is helping us to can believe that there is a spiritual reality. There is spiritual forces there is god who is with us yes we don't see him with these eyes we don't see him with these eyes but he is there and this calls us to have eyes of faith to have spiritual eyes to pray knowing that god is there help us to have eyes to know that you are there to see you and that's what reminds us of john chapter 20 verse 27 to 29 when Thomas didn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. No, I have to see Jesus. I have to touch him. And indeed, Jesus appeared. He, he, Thomas touched him, touched his body, and he said, yeah, Jesus, uh, now I believe. But Jesus says, blessed are those who believe even without seeing, seeing physically, but they believe. They have eyes of faith. And this point, uh, which you must be, understand here, beloved, is that God is the one who gives us eyes. To have faith to know he is alive to know he is there the holy spirit is the one who uses the bible to make us to know about god go and read second corinthians chapter 4 where he talks of the gospel opening eyes opening the minds and god shining in our hearts so that we can see his glory we can see his power we can see that he is almighty and he is for us also Ephesians chapter 1 where Paul blesses or prays for the church. May God give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him and have your the eyes of your hearts. Do you hear that? The eyes of your hearts. Hey, does a heart have eyes? 
But it's, it, it's a language that is talking of faith. To see the things that are invisible. To see the truth of God. And then when you know it, you can apply it. You can overcome even fear and whatever situation. Go and read Ephesians chapter 1, 17 to 20. So it is, as I said, it is not Elisha who opened the, the young man's eyes. But it is God. Because God alone is the one who gives sight. Is the one who gives faith. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, if you go to, to Acts chapter 2, when, uh, as we read in chapter 2, verse 1 to 13, the tongues of fire come and there is a big sound or a, a, a big, a, a, or a, some kind of earthquake and the disciples of Jesus now speak in different languages and people were amazed. What is this? What is happening? And then Peter stand up and he say, this which is happening is what was said by prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2. And when you read in Acts chapter 2, 17 to 18, you, you hear it says, in the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and young men shall see visions and dream dreams. Now people, when they talk of prophecy and seeing things, they, they think it's about seeing the future. But biblical prophecy is about knowing God, seeing the truth of God and speaking the truth of God. And that's what this young man here in 2 Kings was able to see. To see vision. To have the right vision. To see the truth of God. And that's what the Holy Spirit came to do for you and I today. You can't prophesy without knowing God. If you have not seen God. If you don't have revelation of God. If you don't have faith in God. And that's why we needed the Holy Spirit who, able, who enables us to see God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, verse 6 to 16, it says uh, the things of God, the spiritual things of God, that God exists but also the, 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 the promises of God of eternal life it's, it's not something which we can get knowledge of by ourselves or by the flesh, but it is the spirit who is with God who makes us to see God who makes us to have faith to have conviction to have knowledge of God and then when we see and interpret this world and our life. We don't. We know that okay, we are not only looking at the physical things, but there is the spiritual things. Go and read also First John chapter four. You will find that it talks also uh, of the spirit of the antichrist, and the spirit of the antichrist rejects Jesus Christ. But the spirit of God makes you to see that Jesus is your savior, and that you have the life of God in you, and the one who is in you is greater than the one in the world. But many people, when they talk of that, they, they, they talk of just power to overcome the challenges here in the world. But no, we are talking of spiritual truth. To realize that God is our God. Jehovah is the only God and is for us. is our Savior. That is the truth that we need in this life. Now, when you read in verse 18 and 19 in chapter 6, Elisha then prays for, for, for the soldiers of the Syrian army to be blind. To be blind. And many people will say, how, how did they become blind now and then walk 20 kilometers or ride on horses 20 kilometers from Dotan to Samaria? But you must also realize that it was not just physical blindness, but it was blindness of the mind. Whereby you don't see the truth. Whereby you don't realize the truth. And you just follow anything. You just follow and then you end up in a bad place. And that's what we see happening here. Because it can happen that you are, as I said, physically seeing, but you are spiritually blind or you are blind in the mind. You are foolish. You don't walk by the truth of God. And you find yourself following many things. Whether you follow sexual immorality that seeks, uh, that, that, that leads even to disease and um, uh, destroying relationships you might follow greed and love of money which might land you even in jail all those things sometimes you follow false gods praying to dead people seeking help from dead people all those things I'm saying they are foolish it's a sign of being spiritually blind and you follow it and sometimes it happens that yes you, you, you are stupid I, 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 I do stupid things and then you realize and you sit down and you ask, but why did I follow that thing? Why did I do that thing? 
it happens that we reject the word of God. We are blind and we end up in a bad place. Like these soldiers, they end up in Samaria. And this was a lesson to the people of Israel who thought they were clever. But then they reject God. They follow after the gods. And what happened? Now they were in exile. Now they were captured. They had lost their land. Thinking that we are clever. And you can only imagine them sitting and reading this history and saying, but yeah, we were stupid. We were stupid. Robaiza. Robazibari. Because we rejected the truth of God and followed after some gods. Thinking that we will be safe, we will succeed, and no. And this is the lesson for you and I. God opens our eyes so that we see his truth. We see that he is for us and we must follow him. But the fourth thing, God opens your eyes so that you see that you are beneficiary of God's grace and mercy. So that you work to overcome evil with love and kindness. Chutu chabu na chine rafano lechi bwona verse 20 to 23. Dimuzi mwono rufura mato uribwone zori chilizi chawe chiyo wane. Richi tanga nezi. Mara musiro ito lwa chilizi la katuchelo. Ribo wabatu wane wabushu mangalu funo na katuchelo ya mzimu ukunda uchini. Ukunda zuibi. Inye enye nto yesine sifane si bwono verse 20 to 23. Unkulu nkulu zvula metho. Ukuti si bwono kuti siyamkele umusa wake. Isi yesa wake. Ukuti manje iso kwa zi kusebenza, uku ngoba iso onono bubi, ngo kwenza utando, or ngo kwenza eh, ngenjele elungile. And that's what we see when Elisha has sent these people to Samaria, to the king of Israel. Now the king of Israel says, yeah, I want to kill them. And the soldiers now they realize, hey, now we're in Samaria, we can't escape. But Elisha says, no, don't kill them. That's not how things work. When you capture someone, you don't then... Eh, mistreat them or abuse them and actually it was a, a, a reminder that israel who were also mistreated in egypt god had told them in in leviticus 19 that you must handle other people well foreigners you must love them you must care for them because you were once foreigners you were once captured so you must also show love not because you were mistreated now you must go and mistreat others because they are your enemies they want to hurt you now you must also do bad things to them. No. And that's the message we read in Romans chapter 12. When we know the grace of God, when we know the mercy of God, we were supposed to be destroyed, to be punished for our sins, but we are forgiven. We are shown mercy. Then, when you know that, you then show forgiveness to others. You then do mercy and grace to others. And when you read Romans chapter 12, it says, leave the vengeance, the revenge to God. But you must overcome evil by doing what is right. Yes, maybe it's, it's at work. People are against you. Your boss, your colleagues are against you. Your neighbor is against you. Your, your, your in-laws are against you. But then must you do the bad things that they are doing? No. You must respond with good you must respond with love and that's what we learn from jesus and that's what the holy spirit gives us to be patient to be self-controlled to be kind as we read in galatians chapter 5 but the number five which we must see when we read uh, chapter 6 from verse 24 to chapter 7 verse 2 god opens our eyes so that we see our need and that we can't save ourselves we need a solution and salvation from outside ourselves. Mudzimo chumwe chine aita uri chibone musa chirivhura mato. Ndubona zori ari koni ri abalelwa. And risha ya thuso risha ya uchidzwa ono bvanga nda hasho. Interesting i esihlanu isifane sibone. Unkulunkulu zvula mhlo kuti sibone kuti siyamdinga. Asinawo amandla siyahluleka. And ukusizwa ukuncedwa ukusindiswa kwethu kufanele kubuye ngaphandle kwethu. And that is what you see here, the king of Syria, maybe they've forgotten the mercy of God. Now they attack Samaria again, they surround Samaria, and um, the economy is down. Uh, Samaria is locked down now, it's under lockdown. The, the, the business is locked down, and things are so bad that if you read in chapter 6, verse 24, what were they eating? Uh, or verse 25, they were eating the head of, 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 of donkeys. 
uh, and it was even expensive. But also, they were eating the dung, mfuze, wamaiba, umswani, wamajuba, kato famakoto la makaka, azunumi. And there's no food. But that is what is, is available. It was a very desperate situation. But then you find that uh, also in verse 26 to 29, when the king is walking around, there is a woman, a very bad, painful story. She's saying, we even made agreement together, the two of us, we will eat our children. Eat our children. We'll boil them. I don't know, grill them or fry them or bry them. Your child. Okay, I, I, we ate my child. But this one now, to, to, tomorrow, she doesn't want to, to do as we agreed. And the king was so angry. And the king say, what do you want from me? And he attack Elisha. He want to kill Elisha. But this situation, this situation, because when you don't have God, then you interpret situation with hopelessness with desperation, with doing sin, with anger. But this situation brought by God, it's either to make them to repent, to humble them, to remind them that we can't save ourselves. We need help from God. And that's why sometimes you find even people who don't go to church when things are bad, like now in South Africa they say, uh, today is a day of prayer. But people don't pray. To God, but today they say no because there is COVID 19. Hey, we must pray to God because economy is bad now. We must pray to God, but what about other days? Why are you not praying to God? But God uses situations whereby even the presidents now they call others, Hey, let's pray to God. We are humbled by situations to see that even though we are clever, even though we are scientifically advanced, we have money, we are many. Or we have succeeded in the past. But we need God. And that's what we see in this situation. And you must watch out every time when we, we, we meet difficult situations. There are temptations. It's either you, 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 you will be defeated by the situation to do the wrong. That, that situation, uh, l l let's say maybe people are stealing, they are doing corruption. And you end up being corrupt as well. Or there is a temptation of you giving up hope. There's no use of doing right, of doing good things. Let me just give up. That's also a temptation. That's a danger. Or you respond or you want to solve a situation by doing sin. You don't have food. Now you want to steal. Now you want to kill others. Many other things we can respond in a bad way because we don't have God. But God wants us to see him. Wants to see that he is with us. And for us to be patient, to trust in him, to wait on him, to seek him with prayer. And that's what this king failed to do. Instead, he attacks Elisha. He attacks the God of Elisha by sending the captain of the soldiers. Go and capture or arrest Elisha. I want to kill him. But Elisha, he stops or God protects him. He is not captured. But he's able to tell this captain that tomorrow God will do a wonderful thing. Things will change. You are eating donkeys and mufuze or mswani or majuba, but you will be eating flour. And it will be affordable. The economy will be right. He didn't believe. He said, yeah, I, can't, I can't wait for God. If God is not even opening windows, in heaven. He's doing nothing. And that's the danger we fall into. We become blind by situation. By circumstance. It's too heavy. It's dark. We don't know where to go. It's long that we have been suffering. It's long that we are bearing this burden. God is not there. And then we reject God. That's the danger. But beloved, we must remember the word of God which shows us of Jesus who overcome death. Who rise over everything is now in heaven in control and even when he gives us the holy spirit is so that he is in us he is with us in every situation so that we have the strength so that we can cry to god romans chapter 8 it says that you can cry to god and the holy spirit helps your prayers to be heard by god 
and you understand God, you are close to God, you get the power not just to persevere, but also to look forward to glory, to the salvation of God. And that's the sixth thing. When you read chapter 7, verse 3 to 15, God opens your eyes so that you don't see the present situation as the end, but you expect wonderful salvation and deliverance and a glorious future that God has prepared for you. Mudzimu kachitu cha 6 chinanda kore chibone hapa ndi chori. Musi richamba nga mudzimu no rivura mato. Rabona zvitu zvawo, rabona zvamuya. Uita uri risibone hezvo hapano zvine ravakhazo. Sazone mapero. Sazone magumo. Mara ribe no takolela matontha. Ribe no sedza phanda. No lavelela zvimanga dzao, zvipirisao, zvihuru. Into ye 6 esifane sibone. Ukulungulo zvula amen. Wenze kuti sibone kuti lesi simo esikuso. It's not, it's green. But kuna into ezayo. Sifanesi expect esilanga zelele okumanga lisayo. And that's what we see. These lepers, these people who are sick with leprosy, some kind of sick skin disease, they are in a desperate situation. They are faced with a, what you call it, I can call it a lose-lose a, a situation. It's either we go into the city, there's no food. If we go to the Syrians, they might kill us. So they choose to go to the Syrians. And when they reach the camp, wow, they find the Syrians have run away. God made the Syrians to flee. And those guys, those four guys now, they enjoy, they eat, they drink, they get gold and silver and hide for themselves. They take clothes. They go to the next tent. But then they say, hi, Konaman. This thing is good. This is great. This is amazing. And it's not for us only. Otherwise, we will be guilty of hiding this truth. So they go to the city. Hey, tell the king there. The Syrians are no more. But what does the king do? Ah, he starts by doubting. Ah, yeah, you know the Syrians. Ah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're tricking us. They're trapping us. If you go there, all of us, we leave the city. They come and take the city. It's when people don't believe. They come up with those kind of solutions. Or responses. But one of his servants say, okay, let, let, let's just send two people there. And the two people come back and they tell the king and the whole city. The Syrians have gone. They've let everything. And that is what we, we see here. That uh, God did a wonderful thing. And that according to what Elisha, according to what God spoke through Elisha, and he announced it even to the lepers, they were the first people to know it. It reminds me of the, the birth of Jesus. The angels announced it to the shepherds who were very low in society. But they were happy and they go and tell and siege Maria with Jesus and they go and tell the, the town of Bethlehem. We see here the lepers. They see this wonderful thing that God has done and they go and tell others. And that's what we must realize about the good news that God has given us. His salvation, that Jesus has overcome death. We have eternal life. We are freed. Then we must have hope. We must tell people the good news the, of God so that they can see, they can have hope about their lives, about their future. Because when you don't have God, you just see death. Or maybe you deceive yourself and think that I can save myself. But you are blind. For us to have eyes, we need the good news. And that's what we see these lepers going to tell the people so that they come and, and, and see what God has done. The Syrians have fled. And that's what Jesus wants you to see. The tomb is empty. Death is not something you must fear. See, this is where he lay. He is no more. See, he is now in heaven. And that's where you are going to. But if you don't see that, you see only this life, then when you lose this life, yo, you kill yourself. There's no hope for you. Because your life is here. This is all that you have. But let me come to the last thing. God who opens our eyes, he makes us to see the offer of forgiveness for sin. But at the same time, there is wrath, there is punishment, there is judgment for sin. That's what we must see. So that we can make a decision today about where we are going. Chitu chopesa la chinara fonlo chibu wana chitu verse 16 na 20. 
mara also verse 2 mudzimo no rivhura mato rabona zvitu zvawe zvango eh uri sumbedza kangolo ya zviri uri sumbedza na khatulo ya zviri uri rikono ponyoka rikono kheta uri nari kwa gai na muya wabu kopela gai na uchilo wabu kwa gai into yoku dhina isifani sibo ni lana masibega chapter 7 verse 2 but also verse 16 to 20 unkulu unkulu uenza ukutu uvulega amesu ubone ukuthi kuno kutetelelo kwe zono but kuno ku jezi iswa kwe zono kwe zono but ukutu wena ubone ube ne kiniso ube no keta ingela efane ubalege into kutelo unkulu unkulu and yonto that, that, that is the last thing we see here in or the last part is showing us that God's word coming true. And I've repeated this many times because that's what the Bible is showing here. Elisha say this and it happens. People reject it, they deny it, but it happens. Even here, this captain was told tomorrow God will provide food. God will save. God will change the situation. What did he do? He reject that truth. And Elisha said, okay, you will see it, but you won't eat it. You will see what God will do, but your experience of God's power will be different. You won't be saved. God's power can save. God's power can punish. It's either you are delivered by God's power or you are crushed by God's power. It's either you receive the mercy, the love of God, but if you reject it, you will see the anger of God. Then you must choose. And that's what this man was told about what God will do. But he rejected. He even said, ah, God cannot do anything. He won't open windows there. There's nothing that will come from heaven. That's what he was saying. There's nothing that will come from heaven. There's no help there. He rejected. But then the word of God come true. What Elisha said, it happens. And it was a lesson encouraging the church the prophets of God, preachers, all of you who believe in Jesus, to speak the truth. We can't change the word of God. Ne? We can't change it. We can't only talk of love. Hey, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. Yes, God loves you. Accept God's love. But we must also tell the whole truth that if you don't accept Jesus Christ, if you don't accept this offer of salvation, if you don't accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, you are going to hell. You are going to be trampled on. Yes, you will see Jesus. All of us will rise from the dead. We will see Jesus. All of us when we die, we go and see God. We will see him. But your experience will be different. Depending on your choice, on your decision today. Whether you accept the truth of God. And see it. And accept it. Then, your future with God is right. But if you reject it now. Yes, you will see God. But you will not be with God. You will see heaven. But you won't be in heaven. You will see the party in heaven. But you will be outside. You will just be hearing the if there is music in heaven. You will be outside. You will not be experiencing it. Beloved, we must accept what God is giving us. We must accept this truth of God. And it's my prayer, it's my hope that God opens your eyes. God makes you to see. God makes you to see the truth that he exists, that he is for you throughout your life in whatever situation. That you don't grow spiritually blind. That's the danger. And that's what we must learn from the history of Israel. They grow spiritually blind by ignoring the word of God. Not using it, not walking with it in every situation. Oh, God save us. Next time we'll finish off the life and work of Elisha. We'll read chapter 8 and also uh, about the death of Elisha. But let us uh, pray. Let us come to prayer as we conclude this part. Let us pray. I will lead you uh, in, in, in prayer. Oh Lord Jehovah, you are everywhere, you are above everything, you have everything in control. Indeed, you know everything. You are amazing, the knowledge that you have. Oh God, Jehovah, 
We thank you that you reveal to us the truth. We who are in darkness, who have small minds, your truth is so amazing. Your revelation is beyond our understanding. But we thank you for giving us faith, the Holy Spirit working in our hearts to receive your revelation so that we can know you, we can see you, we can have faith in you. Help us as we walk every day, every situation. We know that you are with us. Help us even when we look at ourselves. We know that we have nothing, but we must look to you. Help us even when we are faced with challenges and enemies who are greater than us. But we don't look at them. We look at you. Yes, sometimes it, it, it might seem is the end. There's no future. Maybe we have made mistakes. Maybe we have done foolish things. And we think there is no future. Oh God, help us to see Jesus Christ who rose from the dead, who on the cross lifted the burden of our sins and conquered death. Help us, oh God, to see the glorious future. Help us to pray, not just when we are in trouble, but every day, to trust you, to trust your word, to apply your word, to build with your word. Help us as church to preach boldly what your word says. Speak through us, but also speak to us. We pray, O oh God, that you help us to grow in seeing you. Help us not to be spiritually blind. Help us to overcome doubt and worry. Help us, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing the song from Nyimbo uh, Zabatendi, number 36, Murena Udiva Vamufuna. Beloved, let me also come to just giving a, a few announcements as we were talking about collection of Heidelberg Theological School. I encourage that we conclude. Those who still maybe have something to give, uh, you can send straight to the classes account on the pamphlets. Uh, you will find the account. And also, even our collections, let's send them 
to the Jobex savings account and even our tithes. Um, we thank God and praise God for those who are able to tithe and God is doing good things through them. But the other thing uh, in light of what has just happened uh, during the week where the churches are allowed to can resume services, as church council we were meeting on Wednesday and then we said no, let's check uh, through our centers because Reform Church Jobeg is not uh, one church that meets at one location or meets at one time. So every location, every center uh, will have to investigate the venue uh, if we are able to use the venues because we don't have our own buildings but also to discuss uh, with the elders the elders with the members of each uh, center so we won't be resuming our services next Sunday uh, possibly if uh, there are centers that we can uh, arrange then maybe from the 14th so uh, next week Sunday we'll be continuing uh, even this online uh, service of WhatsApp uh, recording and also putting the video on YouTube. But the other thing that will happen on the 7th of June um, is that um, there is a, a wedding, not a wedding or yeah, you can call it a wedding, a matrimonial blessing, a church service where there is a blessing of marriage um, between Murendeni Lipazi and uh, Slalala Matebula. So as church council, we met also on Wednesday. We should have met uh, earlier in the month um, to follow up on this matter, but we couldn't. And it was a matter that we knew about uh, since even the beginning of the year. We supervised the premarital counseling. It went well. And uh, the date that was set was the 6th of June. But then because of coronavirus, lockdown, there has been changes. And um, but the life must continue. God has called people to marriage. We can't stop that action of God. If God is bringing two people together, we support them. And therefore, we have sanctioned a, a worship service that will take place on the 7th of June. I think it will take place one o'clock um, towards the side of Centurion. I don't want to tell you the exact uh, venue because you might gate crash. Uh, so. Uh, only a few people will be there and possibly it might be streamed or recorded or maybe pictures and we can witness through those other means but uh, later if things are going well uh, there might be a wedding reception um, but let's pray and rejoice with these two uh, our brother Murendeni Lipazi um, who we know uh, has been with us and also uh, our sister, Slalala Matebula, who comes from Assemblies of God. So it is something which um, we must praise God uh, about. So, uh, in short, those are the few announcements. Let us continue to worship God and praise Him, even in our homes. Let us sing this song which says, Sedilaka Mpone Setsetsila Kitsamaye as we prepare to come to the blessing. i 
Beloved, accept God's blessing from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 23. <clears throat> May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, so that you have the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward you who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. May Christ, the head of the church, rule in your life and fill you with grace, that you continue growing to be like Christ. Amen. Beloved, I end by saying thank you. Thank to God. Thank you wherever you are. And all praise to God. And let's continue to worship him, to grow in knowledge of him. So let's end by singing um, uh, the, the song again. Um, we can sing it also in Venda. Uh, Wambuyera, Unti Bama Suisui. Let's sing that song. <laughs>